Might want to keep those helmets on and chin straps fastened as we get closer to Friday. We continue to track the remains of that dead satellite falling to Earth, and it's still falling. Reentry is expected to be somewhere Friday afternoon, though it's too early to predict a time or a location. They now believe it will come down in as many as 26 separate pieces. So there's that to look forward to. We do have these pictures from our website tonight. They show the satellite beginning reentry. They were shot by astronomers. So far, it just looks like a white blob against a black sky. We'll get to see it real well before too long. And it is coming down. NASA now says an old six-ton satellite the size of a bus will come crashing down to Earth sometime tomorrow afternoon. They've narrowed down the when, but we still don't know the where. Joining me via Skype is NBC News space consultant and former NASA engineer James Oberg. James, we've been talking about this for almost a week. We can't help but be looking up into the sky and wondering what's going to happen here. Give us your best guess. 17,000 miles an hour this thing is moving. Where is it coming down? You can track the actual orbit, and now there are maps on the Internet that say if it comes down around 4 p.m. Eastern time Friday afternoon, which is the center of the predicted time, it's going to be off the coast of the Philippines in the, in the eastern Pacific. But during that orbit, as it circles the Earth, it will be crossing, and I've got the map right here on my own screen, up the, the uh, southeast coast of South America before sunset, and then after dark, directly across southern Europe, central Russia, central china so for the folks out there it's still like not likely to hit anybody but it's likely to give a great light show in the sky so that's, if it doesn't come down exactly then it comes around the earth again James, right that's, over that's the a Zealand. huge part it of the world over the middle of south america northern europe central russia and then right across uh, southern china so we're talking about lots of people in this track nobody in north america at all nobody in most of africa uh but uh the track now looks like we know where, along where it's going to come down. Not exactly where yet, because that depends exactly on the fluctuations James, in the upper atmosphere. Th that's a, a huge part of the world you've just described where it might come down. And that's at, what, 12, yeah. over 12,000 pounds of debris. If you happen to be in any one of those countries, continents, what should you do? I'd go out with my video camera, bring the kids out. Because if it is a fireball, it'll be spectacular. It forms glowing, bl bright objects points of light brighter than the brightest stars right. moving across the sky in formation. I mean, it's so, it's so bizarre looking that whenever this happens, there's usually flocks of UFO reports from around the world. In this case, we know in advance it's going to happen. Go take a look. The pieces with, as they break are going to scatter and slow down. You still don't want them on your head, but they can land right next to you and, uh, and, and, and not, not even shake you. But there's lots of pieces like right. that up there in space. Natural pieces come down like this, bigger than this, every day. Artificial pieces, we need to clear out Earth orbit because note, those pieces are going to break off hey, and James, hit other satellites. It's safer to on get that the note, stuff down. How many, the satellites, how many satellites here, James, on that note might fall? How many are up there that might be of concern that, you, that you're tracking or aware of? There are groups that watch reentries, and in a given year, there's lots of small pieces come in, some moderate size, and once in a while, a big one like this. This is one of the biggest ones ever. There's probably 20 or 30 big ones. As a rule, really large satellites are deliberately dived into the South Pacific. They have rocket fuel on board. So the really big ones, as a rule, are deliberately steered into safe impact areas. Once in a while, there's one that doesn't have enough rocket power or went out of control ahead of time. James, what, what we'll do next time is we're going to talk about UFO sightings, since you brought that up. <laughs> since we'll be looking that up. James Oberg on that huge six-ton satellite coming down. Thank you again so much.